Hello and welcome to part six of the playthrough, walkthrough of L, a, mathemag a mathematical adventure. My goodness me, I can't even say it and I've been playing it for what seems like hours. Welcome to the walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure, the educational mathematical text adventure game for the BBC Micro. We've played quite a bit of the game so far and currently we are... We have just uh, crossed the river in a bath, um, solved a puzzle with a gardener and um, another puzzle with an ape, and uh, we've crossed back again, having acquired a rope ladder. Or have we? Because in fact, we turned the ape into an owl, the owl flew off, uh, and deposited the ladder somewhere. Now where is it? Let's find out, shall we? Well, I know where it is because I'm using the walkthrough to um, locate it, and it tells me. Um, and I just went south, and in fact I uh, managed to cross the river uh, by going south. Okay, uh, you don't need to say use bath or look bath, you can also say south. Very good! A new discovery there, which fortunately didn't end in disaster. Right, the bath takes you safely across the river. You're on the lawn beside the river. An old and rusty tin bath is lying on the bank. On the ground is a small medicine bottle, blah, blah, blah. Those are the objects we dropped before. Now, let's pick those up again, because I presume we'll need them at some point. And we're now going to try and find the rope ladder that we won, or were given, by the gardener. You're on a balcony. A faint perfume is rising from the walled garden beneath you. Some worn stone steps lead down to the garden, and a French window leads back into the palace. We're going south again. We're in the solarium again. Um, and we're now going to go west. Music room, west. The orange lobby, west, the room of the pool, west again, you're at the top of the spiral staircase above the boiler room, uh, we are now going down into the boiler room itself, into the steamy depths of the boiler room, west, we're in the L-shaped room, south, old kitchen, west, workshop, south, you're in a room where a huge creeper has grown through the windows and covers a large area of the room. Doors lead to the north and west. There's a rope ladder here. There it is. And that's where the ape slash owl deposited the rope ladder for us so that we could row across the river in the bath without sinking under the immense weight of this rope ladder. How big is this rope ladder then? If it's so heavy that it would have sunk us. Must be very hefty, must be very important. Still, let's lug it around with us as if it were uh, made of silk. Right, from the creeper room, we're going west. You're at the south end of a narrow passage. There are several doors on the east side. We're going to go north. You're in a narrow passage which runs from north to south. There are several doors on the east side. North again. You're at the north end of a narrow passage. There are several doors on the east side. It's getting repetitive. We're going east. You're in a room containing a heavy black oak chest with intricate carvings on it. There's a telephone resting on it. The only door leads to the west. Now, before I forget, let me just try this. Move chest. It won't move. So take note of that. Listeners, viewers, YouTubers, you can't move the chest by typing move chest at the moment. I wonder why. Um, and I wonder what the telephone's all about. Shall we um, see if we can uh, use phone? What number do you want to dial? The telephone uses numbers between 000 and 999. Well, 999, I can understand. Uh, that's the emergency call number in um, uh, the UK, the emergency response number. Uh, equivalent to 911 in the US. I don't know why I'm explaining this as if I'm going to have a vast US audience or indeed an audience of any kind. Anyway, 
Uh, the number rings, but there's no reply, which means that we are stuffed. Uh, you know, if there was an emergency and we'd somehow managed to burn down this medieval castle, we wouldn't be able to summon help. And everyone would die, and it'd be a quick ending to the game. Uh, zero, 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 it uh, doesn't make much sense. A steady turn tells you this number's unobtainable. Now, what in fact this is all about is the Fibonacci sequence. Because if I type 1 to dial, in fact, the number 1, that's all you need to do, just type in the number you want to dial, you get this. You're listening to a recording of the weather forecast. The heat wave is going to continue. Good. Um, that's nice. Uh, we're having an adventure, and the uh, weather's going to be warm, if not, in fact, unpleasantly hot. Hopefully not, but uh, at least we're not going to be freezing in this medieval castle. Is it medieval? I don't know. I assume it is. It looks medieval from the picture uh, engraved by Gustave Doré. Uh, and I assume it is, but um, it's odd. Uh, architecture's odd, furnishing's odd, uh, so who knows what it actually is. But um, the heat wave is going to continue, and that's all very good. The Fibonacci sequence, I believe, begins 1 1, and we then add the last two numbers to get the next number in the sequence, so that's 2 in this case. 2. It's a crossed line. A man and a woman are having a rather private conversation. They don't seem to be able to hear you. I wonder if that's the abbot and... Uh, never mind. Um, best not dwell on that. Uh, they don't seem to be able to hear you. Uh, listen. Uh, it doesn't understand. Uh, speak. Um, say hello. Thinking. <laughs> right, okay. So we are forced to continue with the Fibonacci sequence. Ladies talking very fast in Spanish. You don't understand a thing. Hmm. Hola? No, it will not understand uh, Spanish. Uh, I mean, it doesn't understand most of English, let alone Spanish. Um, so, number four, if in fact, is not part of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, and that's the standard response you get. Um, number six isn't either, is it? Um, no, which is why it takes a long, it takes a surprisingly long time to, uh, it must be searching through every number in the sequence, um, to see if it's part of the Fibonacci sequence, um, up to 999. Um, five is part of the sequence. It's a recording of motoring information. The fine weather is causing jams. This must be a UK bank holiday weekend where everybody rushes off to, um, wherever it is they want to go. Um, uh, and instead of that, uh, we are blundering about a castle, trying to save a girl we don't know, for a uh, abbot who is a bit scary. Anyway, the next number in the Fibonacci sequence is eight. It's a recording of a bedtime story, something dull about a 13th century Italian. These are rather random messages, aren't they? And actually, I haven't, shamefully, been able to work out what this is a reference to, this 13th century Italian. Um, well, it could be Dante, but uh, why um, this is a bedtime story is... I mean, that wouldn't be a very good bedtime story. Maybe that's the point. Is that the joke? Is that the joke? The uh, Dante's Inferno and so on? I don't know. I don't know any... I don't understand any of this, in fact. Because, in fact... In fact... In fact... You find that none of these uh, numbers uh, are relevant at all. I've just, I've just dialed number 13. The recorded gardening information tells you it's a good time to plant sunflowers. Great. I'll... Go out and do that immediately, and stop playing this infuriating game. Of course, I'm being facetious. To be fair, this is a another um, teacher-supervised exercise, I suppose, where 
um, you're learning. You, you, school children, school children playing this game for the first time are learning uh, about the Fibonacci sequence, and working out the Fibonacci sequence. Um, you type in the numbers, and you get a reward for each number you get correct in the sequence. Um, and the reward is a, I guess, meant to, what's meant to be an amusing message telling you what's. Uh, on that line that you've just called. Um, so there you have it. Uh, there are several more numbers, as you can imagine, in the Fibonacci sequence before we hit 999. Um, am I going to go through all of them for you? Well, in fact, I am going to go through the rest of them. Uh, uh, let no one say this is anything but thorough this walkthrough or playthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Call for number 21. It's an answering machine for a Chinese laundry. You don't bother leaving a message. Why would you? You're, um, yes, and also the Chinese laundry, really? Um, and yes, okay, interesting, interesting. Anyway, we don't have any laundry and um, we don't have anything recognizably mundane at all, in fact, so. Anyway, the next number, in the, next number in the Fibonacci sequence is 34. A recording tells you what's on in Loughborough. It doesn't last long. Good joke, good joke. First actual gag of the Fibonacci sequence. And it was 34. I remember that. 55, a voice says, look, I told you not to ring me at work and hangs up. Hmm. Could try harder. 89. It's the financial news. Apparently an improvement in the economy is expected soon. Plus ça change, plus c'est le singe. No, never mind. Um, what I mean is, um, uh, well, you know, things are always the same. And, um, you know, the economy is as the economy does. And it doesn't do very well a lot of the time. And apparently it wasn't doing well in 1984. Um, uh, yes, I was slightly too young to care, but um, at the same time, um, I know that many people suffered, and uh, it's all because of Thatcher. A little bit of politics. Right, 144. Let's call 144. Um, it's the cricket score. England are 132 for six. Jolly good. Come on, England. 233 we're calling now. The recipe of the day sounds revolting. Anyway, you're not hungry. We're not hungry. We don't have any clothes for the laundry. We don't need water or food. Um, that is demonstrated later on, in fact, our lack of any need for sustenance. Um, and we've been wandering around for hours. Who are we? We're superhuman. We don't need to solve all these puzzles. We can just batter the entire castle down to the ground until we find who we want. Call number 610. The engaged turn tells you the line is in use. Great. How amusing. Call number 987. An irate voice says, you really have gone too far this down and slams the phone down, which is an indication that we've come to the end of the numbers in this Fibonacci sequence that are less than 999. Well, wasn't that interesting? No. One good gag and the rest were kind of mundane. I really think they could have put some more effort into that to provide kids with a better reward. I don't remember doing this when we played the game. In fact, I don't actually recall playing... Or, sorry, I don't actually recall our teacher giving us exercises based on this game. It's quite possible that this was a sort of extracurricular activity, in fact, at the time. Um, and that's how nerdy we were. But anyway, um, we didn't really expand or follow up any of these um, puzzles. And it's a bit of a shame, because some of them are quite... Uh, have some potential for further investigation. Anyway, we didn't do this one, and um, more's the pity. At this point, I shall pause and see you in the next part of the walkthrough. <laughs>